All right, we're out here working on the bike again, and uh, today we're going to be um, mounting the engine onto the bike. I got the engine set up here on the little stand, and uh, a couple things I'll point out. I took the crank off and the chain, uh, the pedal chain, and uh, just kind of got all that stuff removed. I didn't record it. It's pretty basic stuff, so uh, just to give you a little update, I did get all that off, and... Uh, so now we're ready to uh, get that engine mounted in the frame. And uh, so I got the engine set up here. I got my old chain, pretty dirty. And I got this piece of aluminum. It's about a 16th inch uh, thickness, about three quarter wide. And I'll show you how I'm gonna use that to uh, get the chain line set up. Cause that is the most important thing uh, on any chain driven vehicle is the chain line. Uh, if it's off by even as little as an eighth of an inch, uh, it will bind up, uh, causing you problems. You might jump the chain, uh, break the chain, anything like that. Break your, uh, your uh, clutch mechanism, even bend the output shaft. And if you bend that output shaft, then your engine is basically toast. Uh, it's just not worth replacing that output shaft because it is the crankshaft of the engine. So you just go get a new engine. So anyway, uh, today we're going to be uh, putting this engine uh, in the uh, on the engine plate. We'll get it mounted, uh, get some bolts in there, and uh, get it all lined up. All right, so I got the engine sitting on the little uh, engine plate, and I'll make one little point here. Zoom in a little bit. As you can see down there on the bottom, I put that little adapter plate back on. Uh, I was doing some research and I found that it's actually uh, kind of important to use that. Uh, the engine casing is just cast aluminum, uh, which is fairly soft as most people know. So this engine plate actually absorbs some vibrations, some shock, and uh, it helps to prevent the uh, engine casing from cracking. Because if that cracks, then you're done. You got to go buy a new engine. So I put that adapter plate back on, and since this engine is so offset to the right side of the bike, uh, it fits. Uh, it didn't fit when I first tried it, but uh, it fits now, and so I'm going to use it. All right. So what you're looking at here is the all-important chain line. This is the rear sprocket, and up here. You can see the clutch sprocket. I'll kind of zoom in and you can see. But this is the part that really needs to be dead nuts accurate. Like I said, if it's off by just a little bit, then you're going to have big problems. So this is where you need to take your time and make sure that this is right. Alright, and here's where that little aluminum stick I showed you earlier comes into play. I've got it clamped back here at the rear drive sprocket on the inside of the drive sprocket and it runs up here to the inside of the clutch sprocket. So this is how I'm going to make sure that my chain line is accurate. Uh, I'm going to use this and I'm going to use my old chain. Uh, like I said, you cannot spend too much time getting this right. This is the most important part of this build. Let's get this lined up as best we can. So this is a little bit of a flimsy rod, but that's okay. We still have the chain. Let's double check our work. And that looks, the distance in and out inside the frame, that's good. Now I just need to check the rotation of the engine. Okay, that's pretty good right there. So I'm going to run and go grab some clamps, clamp the engine down so we know it's not going to move. All right, got the engine clamped down. Uh, it's in its rough position. You know, it, it's pretty accurate, uh, but you know, I'm not going to drill any mounting holes just yet. Just going to clamp it in place. 
There's the back clamp. I'll come around here to the chain line. Let me get this cable out of the way. So, as you can see, it's pretty lined up, but we're going to use the chain, the old chain over here, uh, to double check everything. So I'm going to go get myself some rubber gloves because this thing's kind of nasty and I don't want to get greasy fingerprints all over my camera. So, I'll go do that and then we'll come back and uh, we'll keep working on this. Okay, so we got our nasty ass chain here and we're just going to use this another way of checking our chain line. Just drape it over the rear drive sprocket, drape it over the front drive sprocket, and you want to kind of pull it tight. Unfortunately I'm going to have to get a new chain, this one's too short. Then double check everything. That looks pretty good actually. I'm pretty happy with that. So, we get the chain off of here, and then we'll mark, mark our holes to be drilled, then we'll drill them, and uh, get this in. Alright, so I'm going to come in here, my Sharpie, I'm going to mark these little holes on the template. Be real careful not to disturb the position, I still got a clamp here in the back but I had to take that front clamp off to be able to get to it. So, you know where that one is? Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit tricky. But I got it. So okay, now we're ready to pull the engine off and drill some holes. All right, one little note here. Uh, I'm not sure the diameter of these holes. What I do have here is a 5 16 inch uh, bolt. And you can see in there, it is a bit of a loose fit. I'm not sure those are 3 8 diameter. I think they're a little smaller than that, which tells me they're probably metric, uh, considering these other bolts that mount the plate to the engine are metric. And it's made in China, and everything has gone metric now. So, but this is a 5 16 So anyway, I like that clearance, and I'm gonna drill out the holes in the motor plate to three eighths. So what that'll do is it'll give me uh, clearance so that I can shift the engine around a little bit, you know, left to right, front to back, kind of twist it, and that'll give me some fine tuning to get the chain line uh, as accurate as possible. Okay, same gig as before. When I come in with this smaller drill bit, it is a 3 16 inch drill bit, I measured it out. Uh, I like this drill bit because it is nice and sharp and it doesn't wander when I'm trying to start the hole. I don't, I can't find my center punch. Uh, if I could, then I'd center punch these holes. But this is a nice sharp drill bit and I'll just start it slow and I shouldn't have any problems. Then I'll come back in again with the step drill bit. And like I said, I'm gonna drill these holes out to 3 eighths. When you watch me drill, these holes, these eight holes here for the rosette welds, those were 516, so it's going to be one size larger. So, here we go. So now we're done with the pilot holes. Come in here and change out my drill bit. And uh, we'll get these drilled out. 